Wonder, could you come to the camera? Okay, very briefly. Thank, yes. thank you. Yes. Not to interrupt just the conversation no, go ahead. you were just having, but did anything that you learned in there change your perspective on Ukraine? You've no. Been pretty outspoken. No. No, it did not. Uh, I, listen, what I heard in there, let me just, you know, choose my words carefully given the, it was a classified briefing, but um, I'll just say this. I mean, I, I, if, if there's a path, if there's some path to victory in Ukraine, I didn't hear it today. And I also heard that there was going to be no end to the funding requests. So I think this latest request for what is it, 24 billion? That is not the end. They made that very clear. It's not close to the end. So I would just say what we're basically told is buckle up and get out your checkbook. Of course, it's not our checkbook. And can I just say, by the way, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing all of these people in that room for the administration applaud Congress for being so generous. This isn't our money, for heaven's sake. It's not our, we're not being generous. It's the American people's money. And they spent 115 billion of it. And so far they have basically nothing to show for it. And they're going to ask for a heck of a lot more. 24 billion is not the end, not even close to the end. So what happens end. if Congress doesn't help them with what they need? Well, hopefully, number one, our European allies will actually do something. And they just confirmed to us again that we have spent more than all of Europe combined. I mean, last I looked, Russia was in Europe. So we need our European allies to step up to the plate here, and Germany in particular, we can start with them, and do more. But that's not the message they're sending. The message they're sending is American, the American people are on the hook indefinitely. So let's have no more applause for Congress spending other people's money. They should go to the American people and just level with them and say, we want 50, 100 billion more, maybe more than that. Are you going to Some of these other Republicans, they're saying that essentially withdrawing the assistance we're giving to Ukraine would amount to uh, worse than what happened when the Biden administration withdrew from Afghanistan. What's your response to the here's, you know, Here's what I think you could do. Go through and listen to all, take all these comments about what would happen if we didn't keep spending the American people's money. Take out Ukraine, insert Iraq, or insert Afghanistan, and you would get exactly what George W. Bush said for years and other people after him about why we have to stay indefinitely in those countries and keep spending money indefinitely with no oversight, by the way, and at the end of the day, very little to show for it. It's the same recycled arguments. I don't... I don't know why we have to go through this again. I seems a little bit different than Russia. How? The arguments aren't any different. That's the same argument over and over. Listen, I just listened to them say, for our standing in the world, we must keep spending this money. Literally. For our standing in the world. I mean, that's now what we're, we're spending money on? For our standing in the world? Do you plan to attend? Mark Kelly mentioned that a pen and pad today that after the war is over, there may be a need for a Marshall Plan-esque, yeah, yeah, right. you know, spending to no rebuild doubt. the country. What do you make of that? Oh, yeah, that'll be next. We're talking, that's what I mean. They're, they want $24 billion now, many, 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 many more billions over the next year. It just said that. And then they'll want on top of that, who knows how much. Now, listen, here's what I did today. I just stood out on the steps of the Capitol today with people from my state and around the country who are exposed to nuclear radiation by the federal government, and they haven't gotten a penny from their government, not a penny, for 70 years. And you want me to go spend their money, $100 billion more dollars on Ukraine, and they can't even get basic health care because they've been poisoned by their government with military operations? That infuriates me. Are you, are you concerned right. at all that pulling out of Ukraine, pulling aid away from Ukraine could then send a bad message to China, to President Xi? No. I think, I think the Taiwan. message that we need to send, listen, the way to deter China is to deter China. And you have to do that in the Pacific. Ukraine is not in the Pacific. So our number one national security threat is China. Right now we are out of position. If China invades Taiwan tomorrow, we are not in a position to stop it. And I, I think we've got to tell the truth to the American people. If they invade Taiwan, Taiwan falls. I mean, that's just... So if you're not concerned about that, then that's fine. But I am. Do you plan so. to attend Zelensky's meeting with Senators tomorrow? I doubt it. Although after what I heard today, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should. Just because I'm, I was so surprised by what I just heard in there about the state of, of the effort that I thought, you know, maybe I should hear this directly from Zelensky. Because what I heard I, was alarming. So you want to hear from him... The state of the war effort. I was surprised by what I heard in there about where about it is. Progress. Yeah. Do you have any questions for him? 
Well, I mean, on this side, I'd, all about the progress. I mean, it was th that was a little different tune that was sung to us there than I've heard sung in public, and it was an alarming one. From I'll just say, without saying anything more. Senator so, Hawley, yeah. Mitch McConnell has argued that we've got a lot for our money. That most of this money has gone to weapons manufacturing in the United States. Military contractors. Upgrading our own factories, modernizing them, restocking our own arms after we gave them some of our older weapons. And that that's actually going to help us and help our own military and provide jobs for Americans. At the same time, he points to Russia's military being degraded on the cheap because we've spent trillions of dollars to counter the Russian military and for like a hundred billion, we've really helped Ukraine destroy a lot of Russian military equipment and capacity. And he also says, you know, Ukraine is free. That's a that's a victory. Well. You, last I looked, Ukraine had a whole bunch of Russian troops in their territory. So we've spent $113 billion. That is not cheap of the American people's money. And frankly, the idea that the, I'm sure the military contractors are loving this. Oh, no doubt they are. They're making gobs of money. Is that equaling new American jobs? I'd love to see that analysis. I haven't heard any actual numbers. I've heard a lot of happy talk about it. I've also heard from the same people that spending of money in Ukraine is deterring China. I mean, what, these folks, if they want, they need to make the case for Ukraine. If they have a strategy to win, let's hear it. If they have a strategy to actually end this conflict, let's hear it. But let's not have any more, frankly, misleading comments. Let's not lie to the American people about what we're doing and where we are. Let's not tell them we're winning when we are not. Let's not tell them that Ukraine is winning when it's not. Let's not tell them we're ready to stop China when we are not. They lied to us about Iraq. They lied to us about Afghanistan. I'm frankly tired of having them actively mislead us about Ukraine. I mean, this should stop. These people should stop. Do you think that they should try to provide their equipment to drive Russian forces entirely out of Ukraine? No. Should we? No. Absolutely not. No. No. We should not. I'm totally opposed to putting American troops on the ground. They say they are. But no. No, I think we should, no. We spent 115 billion. What we ought to be doing is getting our force posture where it needs to be in the Pacific vis-a-vis -vis China, where we are badly out of position. The other argument that's made, including by Mark Kelly, who just came back from Ukraine, is sort of a domino effect argument. That if, right. That if, you, if we pull out of Ukraine- Like Vietnam. That they would then be on the doorstep of Poland, they would be emboldened to go after Lithuania and all these other uh, satellite states that used to be part of the Soviet Union. Well, wait, you just said a second ago that their military is significantly degraded. So how are they going to, it's one or the other, right? Either the military is degraded and they're not in position to do that or they're about to overrun all of Europe. It's not, it's not both. So, I mean, I think you should put that question to the folks who say that. I mean, is, is their military, a, is it a, a roaring tiger or is it degraded? I mean, it's one or the other. So the truth is, is that the argument always shifts to whatever's at hand to get us to spend more of the American people's money without any strategy for victory. And that's what I just heard down there today. So listen, I hope I'm wrong, but um, I better let you guys go. Are you saying based on what you heard today that you're, the American public is being lied to on Ukraine? I think when you tell the American public that things are going well in Ukraine, that is not the truth. I think when you tell them we're in position in China where we need to be, that is not the truth. When you tell them that doing what we're doing in Ukraine is helping with the China fight, that is not the truth. So I just think you should, we should tell the truth. And that is not the truth. So All right. Senator, thanks, guys. Thank you, Senator.